Welcome back guys. Today I got a package from Banggood. They supplied me with this 7 inch LCD screen that I am going to build a case for and install with a Raspberry Pi. The box con contains a little note with the settings that you need to use for your Raspberry Pi. Do not forget to change those otherwise it won't work. It also has the HDMI cable and a power USB cable for the screen. The screen is rather a nice little thing, uh, though the cable for the HDMI is on the side and that can make it a little bit tricky to mount it neat and tight. So I started with actually designing and printing the case. I'm not going into the case details today. The second part is now done. So let's see if we can get this off. It looks really nice, I must say. This is printed in 0.2 mm, uh, so it's a little bit nicer than the first one. Uh, unfortunately, when printing on tape, it tends to stick like hell. You just have to pry it off very, very, very slowly, and it generally tend to. So basically, this is the back side. Um, four screw holes in the end if I want to mount like that, or one in the middle, and this is where the Raspberry Pi goes. Uh, I did do a little bit too small holes, and it's a little bit thinner on those points. Uh, just to make it a little bit quicker to print and as you can see there is tape you can see the tape here I didn't put that down any nice surface for it so let's try this out so here we have the other one that I failed with and this is the new one um, this is printed in 0.4 millimeter and the problem here is that I did break the power and you can clearly see the difference here in the layer, uh, that part is rather nice, but that isn't. And the same goes on the inside, where you can see how thick and it didn't bodge or it didn't surface or adhere properly. Meanwhile, that one did it. So we have the screen here on the first template that I did, and the plan is this one to actually sit on top of this. And if everything is correct, this one should somewhat fit on top of it. Uh, and that depends on the tolerances of this box. And I think I need to cut the corners just a little bit because there are some overhang. And that's generally normal. And that's because I didn't round off the corners. So it's actually my mistake. I would say almost a perfect fit. The interesting part is that it is bowing a little bit and I'm not sure if that's due to the bed. Uh, I saw that now and I think it is the bed that is a little bowed. I need to sort that. But the screen fits pretty well. It's time to mount the Raspberry Pi in the bottom here and it will be mounted something like this. So we need to make a little bit bigger holes for it to sit. Take this rather small drill. Oh, it smells lovely. And as you can see I don't have the USB ports on the side and that's because um, I'm going to utilize the USB to talk to the screen and this will be encapsulated so you shouldn't have to actually add anything extra. And the screws I'm using is normal computer screws so nothing special about them. Like that. Uh, we're using this HDMI cable. And 
cooks up to this. And then you just flip it over like this. And it's tucked away rather nice inside like that. Yes, the screen is not in the middle and that's because you need to fit the cable. Um, I do have a plan to perhaps add something else here. A smaller screen that can show bar graphs and stuff like that. This is for the solar system. So this is the first step. We now need to add the micro USB cable and power to the Raspberry Pi. It's also plenty of space as you can see inside here to actually add batteries and a charger. So that's something that I do have to plan to do as well. Uh, currently it does not support anything here but you could potentially just glue it in place if you want to. So here we have the two DC plugs. I did plan to use the right one here. Uh, unfortunately the right one does not fit to the DC plugs that I have. And that's because that's not a 2.1 mm, it's 2.5. So that sucks a little bit because I don't have any other ones. I found this plastic one that is going into a case and that doesn't fit the design so I have to leave this outside for now. The PSU I'm using here it's very important when you're using this type of screen that you use a PSU or adapter that is powered high enough. This one is powered 5 volt 2.5 amp and that is what I would consider minimum. So watch out using the mobile phone charges because that may not work with this screen. This screen easily can draw one amp on its own. And the Raspberry Pi version 3 is recommended to have 2.5 alone. So 2.5 total is absolutely minimum. So I will be running with this today. So we need to mount this inside. And when it comes to the plugs, we generally use the positive in the middle, and that's that plug. That's not always true though. On some occasions they may have switched this all around, so always check your adapter before using it. In this case, the positive is in the middle. When doing this, it may also be proper to add an on-off switch on the side here, and that could be a really good uh, thing to do. Um, in the layout I, ha I have linked, linked in below there is a switch included including the hole on the side uh, so you actually can mount this properly. In my version here that is the first test version I will not include that switch since I don't have this either. It might be that I follow this up in another video. It's now time to mount everything together. I have a little bit of a long uh, cable here for the USB but that's perfectly fine. Um, we tie everything in together inside the box. It can be a little bit tricky uh, but it is doable and it's built to actually work. Um, so you need to tuck it a little bit. When you have done that the box should rather nicely fit over will be a very very snug fit. But when you're done it will look like something like this. 
Uh, I have this plastic cover still on the screen. I will leave that uh, there as a protection. So let's boot this sucker up. So before we boot this up you need to reconfigure a couple of things for the screen otherwise you will get this strange image that I show now. If that's happening that's because you haven't configured the screen on the HDMI port. You need to set the port statically in terms of solution uh, resolution for the uh, graphical for the screen itself. When all that is done, it's just a matter of taking your cable and plugging it into the power. If you have a switch on the side, switch that on. So I'm now plugging it in. I'm using my Grafana Raspberry Pi ISO of course. As you can see it boots up really really nice. If you have a two week of a PSU, the Raspberry Pi will either reboot or flicker a lot. And I mean really flicker the screen. If that's happening, that's because your PSU or your power to the Raspberry Pi is too low. So as you can see here, the touch screen is working as well. We can get into everything that we want. Uh, the resolution is rather low, uh, so it might be a little bit tricky to gain access to everything, but it do work. Uh, so let's see if we can get into the browser. And as you can see, it do work. I do like this a lot. So guys, it's now done. The unit is here, as you can see. I'm very happy with it, even though there is plenty of things that you can do better. Uh, I have added a switch to the side here that you can switch it on and off and that works flawlessly. I also have the output here tied in place and that also works. Uh, the units have been used a lot and hangs on the wall inside my shop here in my garage and is used for showing the graph for my solar system. If I would do this for the inside the house, I would most likely do the box a little bit better and tighter. Uh, the files for the box, if you want to print one yourself, can be found down below. Uh, I take no credit for them because they are simple, quick files. And if you want to buy the LCD screen that is supplied by Banggood, you have links to their shopping site down below as well. And if you do that, that will be supporting my channel a little bit. Uh, this was a project I did a month ago and fortunately I have not had time to edit the video and I were lacking some details in the build it seems. Uh, I think I am lacking one of the SD cards. But with that said, the machine is working, I got it up and running and hopefully you enjoyed the video somewhat. Uh, I'm currently processing a lot of videos that I have laying around that I have not edited yet and I hope to get more material up for you guys in the soon near future. With that said, Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.